So in the previous video, we began revisiting the topic of fear and greed and discuss how the market started off very greedy at the beginning of the year. And for evidence of that, I presented the fear and greed index registering extreme greed. We talked about uh, stocks like uh, Virgin Galactic, ticker symbol SPCE, going parabolic to start the year right into February 20th. Right there, it went to $42 a share. That was the top. And stocks like Tesla, which may end up being a good investment um, over time, but you see that it went parabolic almost to $1,000 a share on this log chart here. And also you see um, stocks like uh, Microsoft here that even though this is a trillion dollar company, it's, and it's a great company, but you see there's this last portion here where it, go, it really goes uh, vertical here. And then you see like around um, the end of the previous week, it started selling off. And then this kind of looks like a double top, a topping pattern that happened right before uh, the big sell-off. So you see some indications of a large cap leader stock like uh, Microsoft uh, rolling over. So um, you can see this clear evidence of greed starting to happen, um, but how do you recognize a fear when it starts to happen? So typically it takes a lot longer to happen, but you see right here, we sold off very quickly and quickly flipped over to fear. Now, um, to sense fear um, overall uh, in, in a social setting, for instance, on social media, you'll see things like this start to trend. So you see on Friday, uh, stock market crash 2020 started trending. So you see just regular mainstream people are posting about stock market crash. They maybe never even talked about stocks very much. And so you'll see a lot of people uh, posting charts of the Great Depression, talking about 2008 a lot and things like that. So uh, you can see how quickly uh, people can go from, hey, we are in a bubble to this is the worst uh, crisis of all time. And so there, there's very extreme uh, indicators there. But also um, you see the patterns like a, a leading stock like Microsoft will start to roll over. And then you also see a spike in the VIX. So I've mentioned a few ways to sense a fear around you with everyone panicking on social media or in the news and other places, but it's, that doesn't really help us if we're trying to build a computer program. What we want is some neutral measurement uh, that's just a number that indicates some kind of gauge of fear. And so the next topic we're gonna to talk about here is the VIX, which is the volatility index. And if you pull up the Wikipedia page, you can read this. I'm not gonna go over the whole thing, but uh, it's it was made by the Chicago Board Options Exchange. And it's a measure of a stock market fear, often called the uh, fear gauge. So it's a measure of volatility. And uh, what they do is analyze, so this is an options exchange. And you can see there's actually a, a complicated calculation here. And if you go to their website at cboe.com slash VIX, you can actually look at a white paper if you really want to understand uh, the formula behind this. Uh, so the, it's a lot of calculations based on call put and call options. And so here's some part of the formula here. And there's a long explanation that we're not gonna go over. Uh, what we are gonna do is look at this number and how it's changed over time and what the market looked like at that particular time and how it performed after that. So what I wanna do now is download a historical snapshot of uh, VIX historical data. So if you Google for uh, VIX historical data, um, you'll actually get this website, so cboe.com, and they actually provide a historical data set that you can download. And they provide it for, uh, so the index started, I believe in around 1990. And so they provided over many years, but the calculation did change, um, I believe in 2014 or 2015. And so what I wanna do is just use the last five years from when they uh, changed how it's calculated. Uh, but you could actually back test against the entire thing, but I'm just gonna back test uh, from January of 2015 till the present day. So I've downloaded that here. And what I also did was download, as we did in other videos, the uh, historical SPY data, which is the proxy for the S&P 500 that we've been using. And so we can download the historical data right here from Yahoo and save that in a spreadsheet. And so I have done that already, and I want to show you that real quick. And so what I did was take both of those and combine those into a single spreadsheet. I'm gonna post all this data in the GitHub repository at Finance Hacks. That way you can just download it if you don't wanna do this yourself. Um, so I'll post it here. So you see what I did is I downloaded uh, the S&P 500 data and I pasted it from January 1st through the present day into the spreadsheet. And then I also downloaded that VIX historical data 
and I made new columns for it and I place them by the appropriate day. And so what we do is have the VIX open, high, low, and close next to S&P 500, open, high, low, and close. And then the corresponding date going all the way till yesterday, which is Feb February 28th. And then we can use this data inside of Backtrader, which is the backtesting library that we've been using in this channel so far, and see if we can come up with any patterns and build a trading bot based around that strategy. So what I want to do here is quickly give you a preview of what we're going to code in the next video. And this is like the final result of what we build. And we're actually going to build a few variations of this, but I just want to give you a quick preview of what we're making. So I'm going to quick click play here and it's going to pull up a plot uh, where I've back tested an approach to buying when others are fearful. So I'm going to run this and this uses the historical data of both uh, the S&P 500 and the VIX. So I plotted the S&P 500 over time and some various buys in green and reds or sells in red. And then at the bottom here, you see uh, the VIX or volatility index uh, charted over time. So even without even looking very close, not even looking at any numbers, I could easily uh, ask you, uh, where do you see a spike? Where do you see major spikes in this uh, VIX index here? And you would point out this one, this one, this one, and then this one at the very end here. And those are all times when the VIX looks like it spiked above 35. And what we wanna do is when it spikes above 35, let's look at the S&P 500 and what actually happened at that particular point. So if you go to this spike, you see that corresponds to August 25th, 2015. And you'll notice the S&P 500 if you bought that particular day, that marked a pretty good tradable bottom. If you fast forward here to this, you'll see this is February 5th, 2018. And what is that? A 10% correction. We had that large gain, like about a 30% S&P 500 gain in 2017. And then this run up here, and then a 10% correction. People panicked again. That was a pretty good tradable bottom. And then you look again, where did it happen again? December 24, 2018, that corresponded to a nearly 20% correction in the fourth quarter of 2018. Again, the S&P 500 was 235 or so, and that was an excellent time to buy stocks because the S&P 500, as you now know, ran from 2300 or so, 2354, I think, all the way to uh, 339, which was an, an amazing return. So that was a great time to not panic out of your stocks. And now you'll see that has just triggered again. So if you go over here, you'll see at the very edge of the chart on February 28th here, uh, we got the VIX way up there above 40. I think it even nearly hit 50. So the volatility index, the VIX shot way up. And if history says anything, this could be a good time to buy some stocks. And you'll see in our uh, back tested program, uh, we triggered a buy signal just at the end of last week. There's this little green arrow at the very end there. So if you stay tuned for the next video, I'm gonna show you how to build that. And just for a quick anecdote, I, anecdote, I remember actually where I was on August 25th of 2015. I remember attending a meetup and I looked it up just to verify my memory, but I went to this little book club and it was August 25th, 2015. And I remember a lady at the meetup saying she had just inherited some money and she was going to actually sell her stocks because she was really worried about the stock market, like really bad. And, you know, I was trying to tell her, you know, you don't want to panic or whatever, but you know, people, people do are, do get very fearful. And if you look back at August 25th, with hindsight now, you can look and see where August 25th, 2015 was actually one of the worst times to sell stocks. The S&P 500 was about 1800, I believe, back then. And, you know, it's nearly doubled and definitely doubled if you count all the dividends you would get over that time. So it's just an example of, you know, you can everyone can think of these times and how the mood was at that particular moment there was uh, out around you could kind of sense uh, the fear that people had but also you know by this vix measurement you can see kind of a gauge of fear and when it spiked that you can detect that way as well and so what i want to do in uh, the following videos 
is talk about the present day where we see the VIX has just spiked up really high and also uh, code an actual strategy that would buy when the VIX spikes like this and determine, you know, at what point do we issue a buy and what point would we sell? What point is the market too complacent? Should we actually uh, do some selling in here after this initial buy? Because after you buy, you also got to know when to sell or you have to hold forever or is it, maybe it is better to hold forever. So um, stay tuned for the next video and we'll start building this trading strategy and go over this entire chart and show you a few different approaches. So thanks for watching.